Amy West, 92.3 KTAR. Rob and Carrie, News Talk 92.3 KTAR, the voice of Arizona. All along District 4, there are a bunch of signs, <laughs> political signs, if you will. There's a race going on, City Council District Number 4. One of those signs stands out. It's you, literally... You can't miss it. You cannot miss it. It says, I heart head. head. You, look. <laughs> look, we're in the age of the Anthony Weiner for mayor uh -huh. of New York campaign, so let's not get all Pollyanna. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. Hopefully your kids aren't driving around listening and are going to ask you what we're talking about. If so, we apologize. I know, I have a nine-year-old. And if they're 13 or more, they already probably They can know. tell you. The I Heart Head uh, for City Council uh, posters are everywhere, and, and Central Phoenix, which is District 4, is a very diverse, very gay, let's just put it that way, neighborhood, okay? If you have a gay friend, chances are they live in the Central Corridor. Or and every the city Calabac has a, their gay district that would, you know, South End in Boston. It just is. The gay bars are more fun than the straight bars, I promise you, okay? Get out there and enjoy one or two of them. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the posters will get your attention, and that's exactly what is intended. But if you're seeing them and you're thinking it's a gimmick, you're thinking it's like the sushi, you know, um, uh, campaign signs that really weren't campaign signs, they were ads for Stingray, that's not this. This is actually a guy running for city council. Consider this a public service. Yeah, his name is Austin Head. We spoke to him earlier, and I asked him about the signs first and foremost, and I said, you know, do you think they're a little bit too provocative for perhaps a political race, his answer? Well, I've used that logo for the last uh, 10 years because I've been an entertainer and an event promoter for uh, here in Phoenix and in New York. It's not something that's new to me and to my normal demographic, but because I'm going into this new arena of campaigning, because this is my first campaign, um, I, and there's seven candidates, I needed a, a way to stand out from the pack. And, and that's Succeeded. really, yeah, that's what it's, so there's seven candidates in the race. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and this is the problem, if you're not like a, hardly anyone pays attention to city council races anyways, I actually had to look up what district I was in, Phoenix City Council District 2, by the Congratulations. way. Congratulations. Who's your know. councilman? Oh, I just... I just Whoops. had it. I just had it. I just had it. Hold on. There he is. There he is. Exactly it. Jim Waring. Okay, Waring. So Waring, anyway, see? Jim Waring is your city councilman. <laughs> see, I'm a nerd. I get this. I'm yep. in the local government. And here's the thing. If you don't know this about the city of Phoenix, your city councilman is probably more important to you than your mayor. Your mayor presides over the city council, but the city council is the group of people who actually make decisions. Does that mean you should care? No. But does it mean that if this guy gets his name noticed by you and you therefore go vote for him, he wins? Name ID is everything. It really is. Yeah. And as we've noticed, too, prior to Anthony Weiner's sexting scandal part deux, he was leading the race because he had more name recognition than the other candidates. Good, There's good name ID and there's bad name ID. And in a seven-candidate race, one of the ways to stand out is do something like this. Yeah, have a double entendre off your name, something you've been using for years. Yeah. So I asked him if he got any backlash from it. Just because it's not the orthodox way of campaigning, a lot of the political types have uh, questioned it. I know uh, <laughs> State Senator Katie Hobbs uh, tweeted, seriously with a picture of, a, <laughs> of the sign. But, well, thanks for uh, retweeting it. In general, I'm getting a lot of attention. I mean, a third of the signs have already been stolen, and I put them out on <laughs> Sunday morning. And then that's funny. I mean, that, you know, because exactly I mean, right. there are, you know, are, we have an intern. And, you know, James, I can see James and Taylor, our, our producer and intern, running out and stealing these signs, because I would have done it when I was If you're a age. teenager, this belongs on your bedroom wall, right? <laughs> and your mom's going to make you take it down. That's yeah. what's so much fun about it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And so the fact that this is getting retweeted by critics of his feeds the machine. It's extremely well done. Now, he also happens to be an openly gay man who's been in the entertainment industry. Yep. He's also HIV positive. Dude doesn't make any bones about who he is. And I think that's what's so cool about him is that he's like, here's who I am. Here's my platform. He's at, a matter of fact, he's running for office because he was the victim of a hate crime. He was beaten up pretty mm -hmm. severely while walking downtown. And he's like, you know what? I need to make sure that people aren't afraid walking around downtown, be they openly gay, be they covered in stripes, be they black, white, or whatever. And so I think that's actually a cool platform because most people who run for city council are going no on the food tax or yes for more parks. That's why people like you yawn. And he's actually giving you something to care about. But that's what I, I, I did like that about him. I like the fact that he's not hiding who he is he's just saying look this is who i am and like it or like it or leave it but you know and he he, he told us that he's running because this is who he is and this is how he's been shaped and he's seen what's happened firsthand 
and he wants to try to make a difference. Now, I, we don't know if he's going to win. I don't know any polling data from Phoenix City Council District 4. I don't know who's the incumbent. I don't know any of that stuff, and that's fine. But at least what he's doing is saying, I have flaws. I have, whether well, you want to call them flaws or not, whatever. Uh, you know, we all do. I I'm just going to wear them on my sleeve. This is what's happened to me. This is my story. Vote for me. He says this. Well, I prefer to be as transparent as possible. One of the things I've found is while campaigning is that it's really difficult to find genuine people in this in in politics. And I uh, I find that frustrating, especially when it's somebody who's re representing you. They should be as genuine as possible. And even though the signs, I wouldn't do this because they're you know because I'm in that regard to I'm not a prude, but I'm too conservative to do that on a sign. But I appreciate the fact that he's going against the grain because I don't like the same old politicians, the button down candidates who are the hair is perfect and everything else. And they've lived life in a perfect way. I like the fact that he's being him. Yeah, well, he's, he's absolutely not playing anything safe. But that's that's who you're going to get. Right. You're getting an openly gay man who's who's done cabaret acts. He's yep. raised money for all kinds of causes. He, he actually said he, he's got an interesting life story. We looked him up and, and he said, when I was 19, I chose homelessness in New York City over homelessness in Phoenix because I believe New York offered more opportunities. <laughs> Here's a guy who's not scared and he's going to take on, you know, the big city issues. Yep. Right. So if he's if he's chosen to live that kind of life, by the way, he's not going to go to the city council meeting and sit on his hands. Hands if there's an issue that he thinks is important. I swear, we looked him up yesterday because we were entranced by the signs. It was all over social media yesterday. And and so we looked him up and he's got his cell phone number. He's got his email address. I dare say if you looked him up, you could walk right up to his door, knock on the door and he'll let you in. He doesn't have any closed doors. He doesn't have any any boundaries. No lines are drawn around the guy, right. which is actually pretty cool. And I think at a, at a time when we're able to insulate ourselves more than ever, and you don't really know who somebody is, isn't it a cool idea to actually know who this guy is? You're pretty, he might not live the lifestyle that you technically agree with or that, that you would, would choose to live, but he's never going to do, I don't think he's ever going to do something oddly enough to embarrass you. Isn't that weird? Because he's not, he's not hiding anything. No, exactly. He doesn't yeah. have any skeletons in his closet. He doesn't even have a closet. And, you know, I, I advocate at least us having a choice. So here, there's the line. So if you live in District 4, and there's a lot of you that do, you live in District 4, you get to decide whether or not he's the candidate you like, but at least he's there. And at least he's being honest about who he yeah. is. And maybe it's worth thinking it's time to do something and vote for somebody who's a little bit different from the standpoint of the traditional politicians. Yeah, and he might he might seem a lot different from you, but by the way, victim of a hate crime, so he's he's been there, he's been homeless. He can relate to a lot of the real issues that you might have to actually deal with as a city councilman as opposed to somebody who lives in an insulated neighborhood and has never had to figure out how to pay the bills, his feed the kids. His name is Austin Head. He's running, and he says the city needs a new voice. I think that the city needs a new uh, voice. Uh, somebody that's representing them and not the um, higher ups that seem to be controlling our, our politics lately. Well, his new voice is the sign in the form of I Heart Ted. You'll see it on a street corner near you. If the signs all haven't been stolen by now. No. Come on, you know kids. You know your campaign signs are good if people are stealing them. Pablo says you should put it in Spanish. What's the word again? Cabeza? <laughs> I heart cabeza. No me gusta cabeza. <laughs> no me gusta cabeza. Look at this. A bilingual show, baby.